developed roof windows have been keeping bedrooms and attics bright and dry for almost 70 years. Today, millions of buildings worldwide come kitted with their 180-degree hinge design. Manufacturing each window requires extreme precision, and ensuring they'll withstand anything Mother Nature will throw at them is a huge challenge. So, how do they do it? In 1942, a civil engineer called Willem Kahn Rasmussen came up with a new way to open up unused roof space. He combined the words ventilation and lux, the Latin for light, and the Velux window was born. The first factory in Ostberg, in the inventor's home country of Denmark, was the size of a shed. Seven decades later, things have changed a bit. This factory is one of 20 worldwide and produces a window every minute. Inside, 300 people and 25 computer-controlled machines work together to produce 2,000 different models. The production lines use a highly automated conveyor system to move components from one assembly station to the next. The challenge for production manager Christian Yesterson is making sure the human workers keep pace with the robotic ones. This production line has 28 different processes and every process has to be done within a certain time. If not, it will slow down the whole line. Every window begins life as pre-cut pieces of pine, soaked in a water-based sealant and coated with lacquer, so they're warp-proof and water-resistant. These are used to make the sash, the part of the window that holds the glass and flips open. The first challenge is fixing four of these together to form a rectangle. That's done using this glue gun, which fires a high-strength sealant onto the dovetail joints. A machine then slides each joint into the other, like interlocking fingers, to form a precision join. The problem is that even the tiniest floor could let water in, so operator Franz Brink checks the seam before doubling up with a silicon sealant. I checked the sash from quality, and now I put the ceiling in the corner. It takes a few minutes for the silicon sealant to dry. Now the sash is ready to be turned into a window. So it's sent to this production line for its main components. The first of these is the distinctive hinged handle. Below this, they screw on a ventilation flap, which allows air in without having to fully open the window, followed by a locking plate. To keep pace with demand, the worker has only 40 seconds to attach both parts before the line automatically moves the sash to the next station. The next addition is the swivel hinge. Developed in-house and patented in 1945, a variation of this design has been used in almost every window the company has ever produced. When the pane is inserted into the frame, it's this clever pivot mechanism that allows the window to be turned through 180 degrees so the outside can be cleaned without climbing on the roof. With the sash firmly in the frame, it's time to add the glass. This consists of two panes, separated by a layer of argon gas, which is denser than air, so it's better at keeping the warmth in and the cold and noise out. Each weighs 20 kilograms and could crack the frame. So before it's fitted, the robot nudges the glass against these feelers. This calibrates the fit to within a thousandth of a millimetre, so the robot can push each pane home in just 0.3 seconds without a hint of a dint or a scratch. With the glass in place, the windows are now finished. But not all of them wing their way straight to the packing line. Every day, the company randomly pulls out a selection of windows for testing. In this room, test engineer Martin Sorensen ensures that the pivot hinges are strong enough to survive a lifetime of use. This is our test for durability. Uh, so here we do uh, opening and closing cycles of the windows to to check if they will last for, for at least 25 years. 
A specially constructed rig completes thousands of tests over a 48-hour period. It's an open and shut case. But next door, Peter Paulson is conducting a more brutal type of detective work. Peter is uh, setting up the test for our 50 kilograms impact test, and that is to uh, withstand a, a hard impact of the window from outside. The chances of someone hurling 50 kilogram steel and rubber tires through your window may seem slim, but Peter's test is designed to mimic the force of a grown man falling on one. Yeah. Eight, four, three. Peter then fits the window to a mock section of roofing and hoists it into another room for its final test. Here, Ulrich Christiansen swivels it under a frame made up of a section of pipes. Ulrich then seals the chamber and moves into this control room. Here, he takes command of a man-made storm-generating machine. Sprinklers in the pipes unleash water onto the window, simulating a torrential downpour. Then Ulrich cranks up the wind machines. Together, the four turbines have nearly 1,700 horsepower, so we can go up to a very high wind speed. Buffeted by winds of 150 kilometers per hour and lashed by man-made rain, or it can simulate the full force of a Scandinavian winter, a tropical storm or a hurricane in the confines of a room just 7.5 metres tall. After entering a hatch below the mock-up, the results of the window test are clear to see. A year of wind and rain and it's dry inside. As Ulrich gets busy with the dryer, the other windows are sent to the packing line. Here they're boxed up at the rate of around 700 per day. Now they're ready for dispatch and ready to make attics lighter and drier the world over.